In episode five, after Javi came back, he didn't talk, and it lasted for a couple of weeks. But because Lottie was right, some of the girls, like Thaisa, ended up buying into the idea that Lottie had something different going on with her that they needed to buy into. So, at the behest of Van, Thaisa started attending this sort of spiritual circle that Lottie would hold about getting in tune with nature. It's basically what she ends up doing as an adult, but this is where it really first started. And right after Thaisa started going, she stopped sleepwalking. So she bought into it even more. But not everybody has bought in this thing. Shauna certainly hasn't. And neither is Natalie. Natalie at the moment is dealing with the fact that Travis feels like she completely betrayed his trust by lying about planting the evidence that Javi was killed. He yells at Natalie, you know, if you didn't do that, maybe I would have found him earlier. And maybe he would still be talking. So he's pretty pissed off. And it's understandable. His brother has yet to say a word, and they keep chalking it up to, uh, he'll talk when he's ready. But everybody's wondering, how did he survive, and where the hell did he go? Eventually, though, he does speak, but it's not to his brother, it's to Ben. All Javi's done since he's come back is draw pictures, and Ben picks one up, and Javi says to him, she told me not to come back. When Ben asks, who told you not to come back? Javi just simply says, my friend. He then takes the paper back and doesn't explain anything else. And only Ben actually heard him talk. But Javi coming back doesn't change the fact that chores need to be done. Mari walks around with the cards that dictates what people will do. And Crystal has to once again take the bucket of shit out and throw it over the cliff. And her, quote, bestie, Misty, decides to go with her to help her out. And these two are really getting along. I mean, the term bestie is applicable because they're both weird as hell. But as they get to the cliff and they start talking about their secrets that they've kept from one another, and most of them are pretty innocent secrets, like, for example, Crystal's actual name is Kristen, but they called her Crystal Day One and she just stuck to it, Misty decides to reveal a very big secret. When the plane crashed, she liked the fact that everybody was acting like she was useful for once, so she decided to destroy the black box. When Crystal hears this, her entire mood changes. The secrets that they were keeping from each other are no longer fun. This one's really troubling because she now knows that Misty's the whole reason why they haven't been rescued yet. Misty tries to act like she was just joking, but as Crystal points out, Misty, you're a terrible actress. Misty starts to get really, really concerned that Crystal's going to go back and tell the group, so she gets tough with her, threatening her, saying that if she does, she's going to kill her. But she's backing up Crystal more and more until finally there's no more room left for Crystal to go and she falls off the side of the cliff. And it wasn't like Misty was planning on that. It was a complete accident. But Crystal is absolutely dead. Misty makes her way down to the cliff and she tries to resuscitate the body. But the entire area is suddenly getting caught up in a snowstorm. And Misty and Crystal weren't the only ones out in the woods. So were Shauna and Thaisa. Because as Shauna was sleeping... She woke up to hear Lottie speaking to the baby, and she hated it. She doesn't appreciate the fact that Lottie is speaking whatever gibberish she is to her unborn child. She's uncomfortable with it. And it was Thaisa who came to the defense of Lottie, saying, you know, Shauna, she's not hurting anybody. And Shauna got so infuriated about the fact that Thaisa didn't have her back that she stormed out of the cabin into the woods. Thaisa followed suit. Shauna told her that she doesn't like the fact that Thaisa all of a sudden is getting wrapped up in this Lottie crap. That the idea that they're still one team is just that. It's an idea because it's not reality anymore. There are clearly packs going on. And she thought that Thaisa had her back, but she doesn't. As Thaisa was explaining to her, yes, I do have your back, Shauna felt a sharp pain in her stomach and she bent over. It came as quickly as it went. But then they too, just like Misty, realized, oh crap, a snowstorm's coming, we have to get back. But as they were traveling back, the pain got worse and worse. The snow got heavier and heavier, and they were getting lost. Now Misty made it back first, and what she told the group was that Crystal just disappeared. One minute she was there, and when she looked back, she's lost. And the group doesn't really care about Crystal, they're more concerned with the fact that Shauna is out there, pregnant, along with Thaisa. So they want to go out there and find him. 
The snow is way too thick for them to actually form a search party, though. So they go outside and they use some of Lottie's techniques that she's been using in that circle. And it just so happens that Thaisa is doing the same thing. And somehow she finds her way back to the cabin. But Shauna's is going into labor. Now, present day Shauna has a whole other mess on her hands. Because as she's sitting there with Jeff, Callie comes in and says, Hey guys, don't get mad, but I might have messed up. Callie had continued seeing Matt, and the two went bowling. Of course, this whole thing was a work for Matt. He was trying to get information on Shauna via Callie. But Callie didn't realize that until the bill came while Matt was in the bathroom. Callie noticed the name, she Googled it, and she found out that Matt was a cop. But instead of confronting him about it, she played him right back. She told him that she recently found out who her mom had an affair with. It was her dad's best friend, Randy. So she comes home and she tells both Shauna and Jeff this, and initially they're pissed off. But Shauna realizes that this could actually work in their favor. That yeah, it's dumb that her daughter was dating someone way older than her, but she was smart about it. And if the cops believe this, then that should eliminate her as a suspect. But she has to make sure. She figures the cops are probably trailing Callie, but also trailing Shauna. So they have to convince them. She tells Jeff to have Randy meet her at a motel to make it look like they're having an affair. And Shauna's hunch is right. Matt and Kevin follow her to the motel. They see Randy open the door. And as far as Kevin's concerned, that's it. That's the confirmation that they need. But Matt doesn't feel like this is it. He wants to stick around. Shauna is actually so detailed that she hands Randy a condom and says, go in the bathroom and, you know, have fun. Problem is, Randy can't work like that. My dude's chafing. His tail is tapping out from the beating it's enduring. So Randy decides to improvise and he puts some lotion in the condom and the two walk out. Matt wants to make sure, though, that they're not being played. So after Shauna and Randy leave the motel, Matt and Kevin head in. And Kevin thinks this is a complete waste of time until Matt finds the condom and notices something about it. It doesn't smell like that stuff, no. It smells like strawberries. And Matt realizes, yeah, we are being played. Because this thing is filled with lotion. He excitedly tells Kevin she wanted us to think that she was having an affair with Randy to get her off the scent that she was having an affair with Adam. Kevin reminds him, yeah, but that also means that the daughter gave you false information, so your cover's blown. As for Thaisa, she shows up at Van's video store, and it's been a long time since these two have seen each other. Van can tell from Thaisa's state that she's just not popping in to see how she's doing. She asks Thaisa, all right, how long have you been sleepwalking again, and how bad is it? And Thaisa fills her in on just how bad it is, sacrificing a dog and all. Van asks her, okay, well, what do we do now? And Thaisa says, well, I was hoping I could take a shower. I just hitchhiked through Pennsylvania. I'm not really smelling great. So Van lets her take a shower, but as Thaisa is cleaning up, she notices that Van has a bunch of oxycodone. She questions her about it, thinking that it's hers, but Van says, the V doesn't stand for Vanessa, it stands for Vicky. She got cancer a few years back and passed away. And Vicky was Van's mom, who she didn't have the best relationship with. The conversation then gets back to Thaisa and what she needs from Van. And it gets pretty contentious, but Van assures her, we'll figure this out together. In the middle of the night, though, Van notices that Thais is sleeping. And she sneaks over to where she stashed those oxycodone pills, and she swallows one, feverishly, like she definitely needed it. When she turns around, Thaisa is wide awake, but she has crazy eyes. Thaisa grabs her and kisses her, and Van realizes this isn't Thaisa, this is that other person. Van asks her, what do you want? And this other Thaisa says, this isn't where we're supposed to be. And maybe they're supposed to be at Lottie's cult, where Natalie has seemed to buy in a little bit more. She's wearing purple. She's going to some therapy sessions. And she even gets a visitor because Misty and Walter found her. Although they're surprised not only to find out that it's Lottie who's running this cult, but that Natalie doesn't want to leave. Natalie actually yells at Misty saying, I don't need you getting in my way, and then walks back. And since it's a gated community, they can't get in. What bothers Misty more than anything is the fact that she never even considered Lottie. She kept tabs on all the living yellow jackets, but she just let Lottie fall through the cracks. 
Walter points out that the real reason why they showed up was to make sure that her friend was okay, and it seems like her friend certainly is, so maybe they can move on. But Misty says, I'm not leaving her here. She's not safe with them. Lottie was institutionalized in Switzerland. But Walter thinks that Misty's reluctance has to do with the fact that she murders for her friends. He tells Misty that he looked into that whole backstory regarding Adam's mom, and he found out that Adam's mom is dead. He's not freaked out by this, though. He recognizes that Misty does have some serial killer tendencies, but that's okay. He still likes her, regardless of her extracurricular activities. But she gets so insulted by this that she gets out of the car, grabs her stuff, and says, you can go now. Because she ain't leaving. In the middle of the night, she actually buzzes the compound and begs the person that opens the door, please, I want to join. But inside, there's a whole other mess going on. While it looked like on the surface that Natalie was buying in, in reality, she was just playing a game in order to catch Lottie in this scam that she was convinced that Lottie was running. She was able to sneak into Lottie's office and through some files found out that Lottie had all this information on everybody in the compound including bank records. So in her true detective moment, she rushes into a crowded room and screams, she's playing all of you, revealing this Watergate moment. But Lottie says, yeah, they all know. They gave me that information. It's kind of embarrassing for Natalie. Lottie tells everybody to leave her and Natalie alone in the room so the two can talk. And when they are alone, she says, you know, you're looking for something in my office that's really in your head. Travis said that you were right about something, and it was obviously very important to him, and don't you want to know what that is? Because I do, and I'm pretty sure I have an idea of how to figure it out. She takes Natalie in her office and starts flashing a light in her eye, telling her to picture the last time she saw Travis, and Natalie starts to. They were together in a hotel room, doing a bunch of drugs, and Natalie overdosed. When that happened to her, she saw the crash site, but it was different. None of them made it. And there was something else out there. When she was brought back to life via Narcan, she told Travis, I felt it. We brought it back with us. Through doing this exercise, she tells Lottie that what Travis was referring to in the note was what she told him after coming to from the overdose. He was confirming the fact that they did bring it back with them. That darkness that was out there. And she feels like the darkness is still inside of them. Natalie then rests her head on Lottie's lap, and Lottie gets really uncomfortable. And when she looks to her left, she notices that the shadow is bearing some antlers. And she gets terrified. Thank you so much for checking out this recap. Please consider subscribing to the channel and subscribing to my Patreon. Hit thumbs up if you liked it. Smash that thumbs down button if you thought it sucked. If you left a comment, I don't get back to you. I usually don't check the comments unless they're like a super comment. Also, if you don't see the next video up on the end screen, not to worry, it'll be up in a day or two.